Hi everyone, my name is Barbara and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Kansas. Today I'm going to be talking about some ideas that are part of my dissertation book. Political rhetoric in the United States frequently involves invoking how people of the future will look back on the present. Phrases such as, history will remember this and being on the right side of history, as illustrated by this quote from President Obama, take a moral stance on present day issues and communicate the direction that one thinks the country is going in. Although this turn of phrase may be intended to just be metaphorical, it does provoke the question of how groups imagine future group members will recollect about the present. I'm calling this process collective memory forecasting. Collective memory forecasting is a form of group-based mental time travel in which individuals mentally project into the future to consider the memories of future group members. It is also a kind of theory of mind because it involves imagining the other's mental states, in this case, the others being hypothetical people who may exist in the future. I started approaching this topic through the social identity approach. According to the social identity approach, individuals gain a sense of identity from the abstract social groups that they are a part of. When group membership is salient, individuals act as representatives of the group. So in order to engage in collective memory forecasting, an individual will need to self-categorize into an in-group and then think about future memories on behalf of that in -group. Social identity theory also posits that individuals are motivated to maintain the esteem of the in-group and engage in strategies to protect that esteem. So, collective memory forecasting may help support one's positive view of the anchor. Related to the social identity approach is the study of collective memory. Research has found, with some exceptions, that collective memory can serve to uphold the esteem of the anchor. This can happen when group members distort historical events and selectively remember, forget, or focus on events that make the anchor look good. Additionally, Studies have found a strong relationship between personal memory and personal future thinking, because both involve mentally simulating alternatives to the present. It follows then that collective memory and collective future thinking may also involve similar processes, meaning that collective future thinking may also serve to uphold the group esteem. Although most research has focused on the parallels between past and future oriented personal mental time travel, Little has looked into personal memory forecasting specifically, so there's not much literature in that area to draw from. However, one such study did ask participants to predict how often they would retrospect about an upcoming significant event, and compared this to actual retrospection after the event occurred. They found that participants consistently overestimated the frequency of retrospection. The researchers suggest that expecting to remember something may be beneficial, because it can make present events feel more important and more meaningful. Applying the study to collective memory forecasting, it's possible that people will also overestimate how much those in the future will remember group local events because thinking that current events will be remembered makes them more meaningful. One type of personal level forecasting that has received much more attention than memory forecasting is affective forecasting or what people predict their emotional response would be to hypothetical future events. Studies have found that people are generally poor predictors of the intensity and duration of typical emotional responses to various situations, due at least in part to two kinds of bias, called impact bias and optimism bias. If these biases can be generalized to collective memory forecasting, then it's possible that people will overestimate the impact of present day events on the future and that people will generally be optimistic about the future. This optimism might extend to believing that the future will come to adhere to the ideals that they currently hold. Taking together, <clears throat> this theoretical background leads me to hypothesize that people will predict that present day events will be, that enhance the anger will be more likely to be remembered and more likely to be remembered positively than events that are in the event. So why is collective memory forecasting worth studying? In addition to increasing our understanding of the psychology of the future in general, I think that it can tell us about how people think about their social groups and what guides their behavior. When collective memory forecasting is invoked rhetorically, it's usually used to legitimize someone's current opinion or the group's actions in the present day. This topic can therefore help us to understand some ways that people justify potentially harmful behavior and policy as well as how people harness the future to make sense of the present. 
Thank you all for listening. Uh, please feel free to send me an email if you have any questions or if you'd like to chat some more about the topic. I would also love to hear about your own experiences with collective memory forecasting and whether or not it is also something that you see happening in, in your own country. <laughs>